What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode where we're going to talk about the Machiavelli effect. Uh, if you don't know who Machiavelli is, Nikolai Machiavelli was a U Italian um, statesman, tactician, philosopher, and to really boil it down to where he was, is the ends justify the means. You do whatever you need to do to get the results that you want, right? And I begin to think the Machiavelli effect is taking serious root during the global pan global reset. Also, shout out to all of the people leaving the well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you guys. Every morning I wake up, I just see all these good, thoughtful, intellectual comments. So keep it up, really appreciate you, and thank you. So I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me last week that's gonna be part and parcel of the Machiavelli effect. I got a car that I'm trying to sell. I'm asking $10,000 for the car. And one of the things that I'm, you know, cause I'm processing like, you know, if you didn't know, I have a car rental business and I've lost 11 cars out of 31. And this whole month of January, I've been processing the wrecked cars. I've got two insurance checks. I got two more checks coming and I've been getting rid of the cars because frankly, it looked pretty bad in the parking lot having all these wrecked cars. So I've been really, really working on that. And then I started to uh, shuffle some stuff in the fleet, get rid of some things. And I have a car for sale, like I said, 10,000. And then I have these people who come and this is the game. Like if you're selling the car online, I'm gonna save you a lot of pain and anguish. If someone shoots you a low ball offer, just ignore them. Because this is what's gonna happen. Someone shot me, in. I was asking 10 and they offered eight. And then they went down to 75, okay? So they come, husband and wife, and they, you know, cause this essentially, this, this is one of the things that's gonna happen. Cause uh, I've actually sold a few cars this week and this January, and typically people who like the car and gonna buy, they're not gonna put you through all these changes. So they went to the thing, they opened up the hatch, they opened up all the doors, dude was on the ground looking under the car, they had a scanner, and all of a sudden, the car now needs catalytic converters. And I'm like, what? So we got a price, 7,500, and I told him, you need to do this today and I'm not going any lower. I said this from the beginning. So they go ahead and it's like, well, we need to bring our mechanic. And I'm just sitting there like, what's your mechanic going to show you that the scanner didn't show you? You know, he can't eyeball mechanical deficiencies. So, you know, and then um, I get a, a, a message from the wife that our mechanic wants to come at 5.15, it's like, I'm not gonna be there, you know? Cause see, here, here's the thing. From my vantage point, we had a deal. But, but from their vantage point, they were still trying to work a deal. So the wife is hitting me up and the husband is hitting me up and he's like, what's the VIN number? And I'm just like, I give him the VIN number and he's like, oh, the car was wrecked. And you know, and I was like, if you know the valuation for the wrecked car is 11,000 according to Carvax. So you're good and you you can't tell because it was repaired properly and you know it's like well I, I want to go down a little bit like I'm thinking about you know 6,500 and I'm like at this point I'm like you know what thank you for you and your wife coming out but I'm gonna sell the car to someone else you have a good day and then this is when it got stupid uh, he started to make demeaning comments he was condescending and then I blocked him on my because I gave I don't give him my, my my main number I gave him Google voice number so I blocked him on Google voice and then he starts coming in coming after me on Facebook see I, I mentioned this before these people get pissed when I don't want to play their reindeer games they get pissed dude was like losing it and he's like you a dealer and all this other stuff and I'm like 
I'm not a dealer. Uh, frankly, I have no interest in ever becoming a car dealer. Uh, from my side of things, the business kind of sucks. I mean, I don't like the car business. You know, if you like the car business and that's your thing, it's, but I don't like it. And then um, I take the car to my mechanic and I was like, does this car need catalytic converters? And he's like, no, no. So what we're seeing in the global reset are people like scamming because essentially they tried to scam me out the car because this was the story. The story was, um, you know, we're going to give this car to my niece and we need two SUVs for our kids. And it was, it was a, when you get a well-constructed story, usually it's a lie because people just come out like, well, this is what we were thinking. It was, a, it was like, it was like well rehearsed. Essentially what they were trying to do was get the car at a price where they can flip it and make two to $3,000. That was the aim. And they lied. They, you know, it, it wasn't a mischaracter, mis, mischaracterization or a little mistake. It was a blatant lie. And this is something that I'm starting to see all across, you know, the Machiavelli effect. It's like, we gonna do whatever we wanna do to get what, what, whatever we wanna get. If we have to lie, we have to steal, we have to cheat, we gonna do that. And I feel that the Machiavelli effect is going to get much, much worse. Because um, one of the things, like, let me go ahead and tell you, you know, maybe this will help you if you're selling a car. If you're selling a car online and someone like, say you're asking 20,000 and someone shoots you a low ball price of 12,000, ignore that person. Because there ain't nothing you can do to move them off that 12,000. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. And essentially one of the things I've learned since I, you know, and this was selling the wreck cars, that there are certain people who are hell bent on getting a good deal. I, I will give you some of my experiences. Like I had a white dude who bought the BMW with a blown engine for 2,500. Showed up, he looked at it, car was it was, gave me the money, he loaded up the car, he went on this way. Had a Hispanic dude buy a car, uh, two Hispanic dudes buy two cars, came, literally these transactions took less than 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And then when I get someone who wants to look and be super thorough, part of the reason that they're not coming off the, that price is that's all they have, okay? They don't have any more money. That's why they're coming at you with that price because that's all they have. And uh, I was, was having the conversation with a dude. He hit me up with the lowball law offer and then he was like, well, you're asking too much. And I was like, the car is at blue book value. That's not too much. If you wanted to get a loan, the bank would finance the loan because it's at blue, ba blue book value. So, and one of the things I've learned is don't engage, don't talk, don't um, just leave these people alone because what I had to do, and you know, for the folks who hate the video, where I talk about AG gas and becoming a millionaire when there were black folks being lynched. Um, black customers are the worst, this couple, they were black. They're the worst people to deal with. I've had so many bad experiences because like I said, when I won't play their reindeer game, and I'm really surprised at the number I shouldn't be, because this is the global reset, I shouldn't be, but I'm really surprised at the number of people who become aggressive, name calling. I'm like, I never say any, I never am disrespectful to these people. It's like, look, that's not the price. Well, you know, thanks for coming out. Thanks for your time. Have a good, that's my, that's my, and these folks get belligerent. They start going off. I had one dude who was cussing me out because, because once again, here's the thing, guys, if you're trying to sell a car, you don't ever want to get into an agreed upon price online. You want to know why? 
because the agreed upon price online will not be the agreed upon price once they look at the car. See, that is what I like to call the knockdown game. They're gonna start with this price online, they're gonna come look at the car, they're gonna find other deficiencies and flaws, and they're gonna keep knocking the price down. And there was one guy who emailed me, we never met because he was on the price, you know, I don't wanna overpay and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, blue book value on the car is 10. It's not seven, right? And he showed me a, a vehicle that was for selling for seven that he didn't get. And you wanna know why he didn't get? Because he was trying to do to that seller what he was trying to do to me. Seven, all right? So he was trying to get it for six. And these people will waste your time. Don't meet with them. Because one of the things I've learned, you know, since I've been selling a lot of stuff online, is you gotta wait. Uh, like I had an iPhone on eBay. I got like 30 low ball offers, 30 of them. I just it let, ignored them all. And then I got someone who paid me what I wanted to pay. If you can wait, you don't wanna be desperate when selling your car. If you need money really, really quick and you're selling your car, these desperate people will come for you and they will come for you hard. And they will come, and if they get any sign of weakness, because with the Machiavelli effect, this was something that the super powerful, super elite used upon the unwashed masses. But now the game has flipped because people are ruthless at the moment. People are ruthless. People are desperate because I'm just sitting here like, okay, I don't want to agree your price. You know, what you're offering me isn't what I want. And I just say, no, I am sh the number of people who get mad because once again, I mentioned this, their finesse game, their finesse game don't work with me because I'm not desperate. I want to sell the car, but I don't have to sell the car. So that makes me a little bit tougher nut to crack. And they're coming at me and like, no, we got the money. And if it was this and this and this and this, and I'm just sitting there like, mm, mm, mm. like I have no intentions of ever getting in the car business. Um, Cause it's just a hassle. It's just a hassle. But the Machiavelli effect, hear me and hear me now. As we go through this global reset, you will see more scams. You will see more people trying to get over. You will see more people like the guy said the car needed a catalytic converter. And I'm like, how do you know that? And you know, he didn't show me the, you know, he didn't show me on the scanner where it said it needed a catalytic converter. He just told me that. And um, after considering it, what went down, you know, and he told me they were a dealer and they had to shut their business down because of the pandemic. And I was like, and that's something that I've run across several times. I am a dealer and I got a question. If you are a dealer and you have your dealer's license, why are you coming to me in the secondary market versus going to the auction and getting what you want for cheaper? There's some problems there because, you know, when I bought these cars, I ran across a lot of dealers and someone I bought a lot of cars from, he's been in business. See, I feel that they, they were bad dealers. I feel that they were scammers and they caught up with them and that's why they had to shut down. And now that's why they're out here trying to do the same thing out here on the secondary market. And I'm just sitting here like, I mean, you know, I was sitting there and I was like, what? He tried to scam me. And I, I'm surprised I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. But this is something that we're going, you're going to run into it at some point if you're trying to sell some stuff. Like one of the things I get, like I got an iPhone that I'm trying to sell on Facebook. And everybody's like, I need your email address. You know why they need my email, email address? To send me a fake Zelle notification. If you 
use Zelle or Cash App, they don't need your email address. They just need your Cash App code and they can pay you. And they're like, oh no, no, we need this for Marketplace. No, I'm like, dude, stop it. And one, one dude, I just went off. I was like, why are you trying to scam me? I put in the ad, don't scam me. It ain't gonna work. I'm not gonna ship the phone on some fake uh, Zelle notification. Let that go, man, let it go. And th this, this is like the number of scammers, because to the point, like this is like, if someone's gonna buy the car, I have a really good feeling pretty much from the first email communication. Uh, they don't go straight to price, because they're like looking for a car, and uh, one of the things that's a good sign that they're gonna buy is like, can we set up a pre-purchase inspection? Sure, let me know who's gonna do it and I'll take the car there. These are people who are serious about buying. And um, I got two of them next week. Uh, one of the things that I consistently see with the Machiavelli effect is people are being ruthless and cutthroat. And I don't know if this dude was desperate because he got so angry when I just said, I'll sell the car to someone else. He got so angry. Because here, here's how I'm working. Like, once you tell me a price, like, I, I actually, because you know, I'm going through an evolution because I've noticed that when these people send these low ball offers, there ain't nothing you can do. There's no point in talking to them because they're gonna stick with that. And what they're gonna do, because I, I tested this, when they come see the car, they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna find every deficiency and they're gonna try to knock the price down lower and lower and lower, right? And there ain't nothing wrong with the car. There ain't nothing wrong with the car. So what I've done to move this, because like I said, I had like, you know, I had 31 cars and I've lost, I've had once, I have some stolen, I've had some destroyed by renters, and I had some wrecked out of 31 cars. That was my situation with 11 cars. And, you know, it, the parking lot was looking really, really bad. And this, this is one of the things, like, I got this white Camry that's total, it was a complete loss, right? They actually were supposed to come pick up this car and the tow truck driver picked up the wrong Camry. And so this is another thing that we're seeing in the global reset, incompetence. He picked up a 2009 Camry when he was supposed to pick up a 2012 Camry. He did not check the VIN numbers because if he had checked the VIN number, he would saw the car he picked up wasn't the right car. So one of the big problems that we're having is a high level of incompetence and a lot of people don't want to do their job. The post office is understaffed. The Internal Revenue Service is understaffed. So with this, you're going to see in the future, it's going to be hard to get things done that normally wasn't hard to get done because um, I'm just sitting there like, you took the wrong car. So someone's got a stolen police, stolen car report out there because he, he grabbed the wrong Camry. And what I'm, what I'm finding out, this whole month has just been extremely frustrating because um, I've been trying to get stuff done. I finally got two checks. I got two more checks I, I, I gotta get. And one of the, the big issues that I've been having is getting stuff done. And like, once again, uh, you know, I understand that it's probably gonna take me, you know, my goal was to get all these wreck cars processed and stuff and get the parking lot cleared in a month. It's gonna take me two months. And part of that is dealing with, you know, right now I'm dealing with a multitude of people. I'm dealing with insurance adjusters. I am dealing with the uh, IIA. I will be dealing with Copart. So I'm dealing with a lot of people. And this is one of the things that happens when you, you start a situation. The more people that are involved in the situation, the more complicated it becomes, the harder it can be to manage.
and right now I've got multiple things because uh, I own the stolen Range Rover. Uh, the guy told me that the valuation wasn't done and he's got, I'm like, once again, incompetence. It is so hard to get people to do their jobs right now. It is so hard. And I'm just sitting there like literally ready to pull out my hair. And one of the things that I'm seeing, and this is something that's gonna get worse because the economy is definitely slowing down. And I'm going to check the unemployment numbers. Uh, I'll do a video on that in February for this month because I've been talking to Instacart. I've been, <clears throat> this month has been slow. This month has been really, really slow for a lot of businesses. And this has increased the desperation because once again, and this is just a message from me to you, stop using your debit card. Stop it. Every time you use that debit card, you expose your checking account to fraud. That's going to be one of the biggest scams going. You don't want to, you want to use a rewards credit card. You do not want to use, <clears throat> you only want to use your debit card to go to the bank and do transactions or pull cash out of that bank's ATM. Stop using your debit card. A lot of you will use your debit card and next thing you know, you're going to get scammed and then you're going to have issues. So stop using that debit card. Okay. So, with the Machiavelli effect, this has really started to roll through society. Um, I inherently believe that most people are good. That's been my experience. But due to the, the pressure of the global reset, due to the people are getting desperate. People are getting desperate. So you're going to see a lot of this, like literally I've had 20 people try to scam me last week, 20. And you know, I've been, you know, selling on Craigslist, you know, Facebook marketplace is relatively new, but I can tell you from selling on eBay and Craigslist, the scamming has 10 x 10 x I mean, I got another scam, I'm 21. It's like, I really want this phone, but I can't pick it up. So uh, I'm gonna have someone else pick it up for me and I will pay, I'm just sitting there like, you know, it is such a hassle dealing with the scammers because they will come first. They will come. And once again, I am learning. Cause like I said, you know, I've never really sold cars before. I've never had this problem. I've never had like all these wrecked cars and the, the wreck is, you know, some of the cars are totaled where it's a complete loss. That's how I'm getting the checks. And some of the cars, I'm getting a partial check and then I have to sell. So I'm never, but one of the things I've quickly, quickly have uh, come upon is how many people think that you are stupid. I had one guy on the, the Lexus, the Lexus I sold for 3,500. I had one guy, he said, I'll give you 500 bucks. He said, that's all it's worth. And I was like, the next day I sold that car for 3,500. Cause once again, you will have people who will give you a whole dialogue about why the car is worth this, this, this. And once again, I've researched the market. I knew what I could potentially get for these cars and I got it because I researched the market. There are people out there who are counting on you to be ignorant of the market. And this couple, they wanted to get this car where they could turn around and flip it and make $3,000. That was, that was their game. Cause I, I was like, when they rolled up in two cars, I was like, why are you buying a car? That was the first question. And my spotty sense started tingling. And man, was my spotty sense on it. Because I've had these people, I've had at least 10 people who got 
pissed off when I wouldn't accept a low ball offer and became, I mean, they start saying something. Cause once, you know, we, once that first um, insult comes across, I just block them. There, there's no point in talking to them. And this fool, I blocked him on the phone and then he went to Facebook. I don't understand these people yet because I'm going to run into some more. I don't understand why when someone doesn't accept your offer, you get mad. It kind of reminds me of some things that women have been saying for years because I don't know what it's like to be a woman, but a lot of women have come to understand that if they reject a certain kind of guy, that guy could get violent because they rejected him. And to a degree, I don't know, no one's ever gotten violent, but to a degree, I'm beginning to see that because I have something that they want, but they want it at this low ball price. Like uh, I had a car, guy offered me 70% less than what I was asking. I didn't even have a conversation with him. It was pointless. If that's where you're going to start, because like I tell you, um, one of the things that I consistently see is if they're going to buy the conversation, the language is totally different. And most folks who are serious don't even try to start negotiating until after they saw the car. Once again, if they're trying to negotiate before seeing the car, know that you're dealing with one of these Machiavelli people because I'm like, I remember when they came and they started going through the car, they actually went through that car for about an hour. I mean, it was to the point where I was just like, you know, I was, I was at a point where I was getting ready to say, look, hey, you know, either you're gonna make an offer or you need to leave. Cause it was, it was taking that long. They were trying to find everything wrong with the car. Now I bought 31 cars and I've not had any major issues out of any of them. And I didn't do any of that. I test drove the car. I did put a scanner on a lot of them and that was it. So I know from buying 31 cars, you don't have to do all that. You're just trying to be a Machiavelli person. You're just trying to be ruthless. You're just trying to get over. And I consistently see this because this is just a signal, okay? What I'm going through is just a signal of what's happening in the broader market. And I feel the rest of 2022 is going to be terrible in this regard. That the scamming, the people trying to get over, the people trying to run game, the, the finesse crew. Like, once again, someone left a comment. I'm, I'm one of those finesse people, but at a certain point, the jig's up. I'm like, I've had so many people try to finesse me. And I am a businessman. I'm about numbers. And I don't, like, I had a girl who tried to rent a vehicle because she was cute. She thought that even though I said, don't just show up and she disregarded the instructions and she was like, well, I'm here to pick up the car. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be there and I won't be there for the next hour. And the instructions clearly stated, don't just show up or you might be waiting. And she's like, and did she, she was a demo person. She went, she messaged me all kind of insults for about two hours because she was cute. And I was supposed to break my left nut to satisfy her desires because she was cute. She was attractive. She's just a psycho. She was a little crazy. Just like uh, I got called gay. I got called. And that, that's a big signal when they call you gay. It's like, wait a minute, you, you, you're not appreciating all of this cuteness. What's wrong with you? You must be gay. So the Machiavelli effect is going to be in full effect in 2022. Hopefully you don't run across this. If you are online, you're trying to sell something. 
depending on what you're trying to sell, like iPhones and cars, I, man, scammers. I mean, like I said, I, 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 I got, I had 20 people try to scam me last week, including the husband and wife, including some other people. Now I've already processed, like I'm waiting on them to pick up this Camry because that has been a bear to get them to come get this Camry because they need to pick up the Camry so I can get my final check. Um, and then I can move, because right now my whole plan was to deal with the, the worst cars, the total cars, the cars that were wrecked. And then my next phase is to deal with the moderately wrecked cars. Cars that drive, they just have, you know, cosmetic damage and that's gonna be the next phase. So, cause you know, I already know what I'm doing. And also I'm waiting on tax season, which due to my understanding is gonna be delayed because the internal revenue service is backed up. So tax season may not be February, it may be May. <laughs> so we will see, we will see, we will see. But yeah, the Machiavelli effect is, I mean, people are ruthless and cutthroat. Ruthless and cutthroat. And it ain't gonna get no better, no time soon. So that's all I got for you. Please leave your well-constructed comments. I appreciate you guys. And I will see you in the next one.